Hello, and thank you for joining us for this small group meeting of the Owls in Flight virtual conversation series, where we discuss matters relating to the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Jana Brady, a geography lecturer at Southern Connecticut State University, and I've partnered with Southern's Office of International Education to present this series. COVID-19 hit during an extraordinarily busy period for celebrations around the world, starting with the Lunar New Year uh, and Spring Festival and Mardi Gras and Carnival in February. Then we had Holy, um, Ramadan, Passover, Easter, Labor Days, Memorial Days, Bank Holidays, Pride Month, uh, Independence Days, all sorts of things. They all happened during various periods of uh, lockdown. Plus, there were smaller engagements as well, like Mother's Day and Father's Day and, and just weddings, um, birthdays, funerals, things like that. Um, we had to kind of rethink all of these celebrations in light of the pandemic. Uh, can we start by sharing um, some of your favorite celebrations and how they changed for you? Were you able to celebrate all of the traditional events or did you have to pick some of um, the ones, maybe the most important ones to focus on? Um, if you were able to adapt the holidays, was it worth doing? Uh, Haroon, can you start us off? Definitely, Janet. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'll actually talk about three different things that I have missed due to COVID-19. The first one I'm going to start off with Ramadan. I'm going to go in sequence. So uh, Ramadan is pretty much uh, a month where you have the chance to reflect uh, on yourself and get connected with your God. It's pretty much a self-improvement and spir spiritual reflection on how you guys are doing so you are uh, required to fast for 30 days within those 30 days it puts us into the feet of uh, individuals who are struggling like who have limited access to food so we put ourselves into the, their shoes and this actually created a lot of sympathy inside of us which leads us to giving a lot of donation money to the people in need and helping as many people as possible this has a, it's been a blessing month uh, that only comes uh, once a year one month out of 12 months so during this month, uh, we try to fast for 30 days and pray, stay as much connected as with God as we possibly can, and uh, stay stay away from uh, bad desires, uh, activities, where because the whole purpose is ready for you to connect with God. And then we were unfortunately not able to celebrate, but one of the good things that COVID-19 has brought us is the fact we were able to have a, more time to be able to connect with our family members because usually in, living in the U.S. where everybody's super busy and everybody's working all day. So Ramadan typically is a time uh, when it brings all the families together. So we every night we eat together at the dinner, a whole family member is always home versus in the past year, it was just me sitting home uh, alone and just breaking my fast myself, which was not too good. But that's one thing that COVID-19 has done really good for us is the ability it has connected us with our family members more in depth and we had a chance to talk about our stories. In addition to that, right after Ramadan, the 30th day is uh, called Eid. It's a celebration where it's kind of like treated as a Christmas where you have a chance to meet your fellow friends, your family member, and you receive a lot of uh, monetary, monetary expenses or gifts from your loved ones. They come up, just pretty much the whole purpose is just to celebrate that celebrating the fact that you have already finished the 30 days and now it's time for you to celebrate that. So I have unfortunately missed that. The first prayer of Eid is uh, usually early in the morning, 8 a.m., which consists of about 1,000 or 2,000 people coming to the mosque uh, early in the morning and pray and then start their celebration off. Due to COVID-19, we were not able to celebrate it this year, which was quite difficult for us because I did not even have a chance to meet a lot of my friends, it was pretty much we had to pray ourselves uh, at home, which was a bit difficult. I had to get used to it. I had to learn a lot of things virtually ourselves because usually Eid prayers are typically led by the mosque leader, which is called Imam. But we had to learn everything ourselves, watch virtual videos to see how we could uh, make this experience as a great journey for us. Moving forward, I the last celebration that I was actually pissed off was my sister's uh, wedding that recently happened a few, two weeks ago. So we initially planned to have about 100 plus guests, but due to COVID-19, uh, we were only uh, allowed to have 30 family members within our house. So instead of doing it at the hotel, we actually transitioned everything into a house uh, wedding where we invited uh, only 30 people and there was some restriction were also applied. It was not as same as uh, as it ha would have been if the COVID-19 was not there. 
but it has its goods and bad. So it's just a learning and growing experience. So we just move forward with that. That is about my experience. Um, so for me personally, so we usually have uh, 21st, we turn 21 and we have this big bash of thing going on. Um, so due to COVID-19, you can't actually have that big, big bash of a party. So it's usually just, it would usually be like a community hall full of people or whichever or building you decide to put in. But due to COVID-19, that is impossible. Um, so it's just like this big celebration that we have and everyone comes together and we celebrate. It's like you, you get your key to adulthood. Um, so it's difficult to do that and celebrate with your cousin, whoever turned 21, whatever. And as well as funerals, um, we are not allowed to it doesn't matter um, whether they have died of COVID-19 or any other related disease. Um, you can't join the funeral and say properly uh, goodbye to your loved one. Uh, only 50 people are allowed. So what happens usually after a funeral is the family comes together. Um, they obviously eat and just like celebrate life. Um, so we don't go and be sad and stuff. We celebrate it afterwards, after uh, the funeral, um, which due to COVID-19, that is the thing that can't happen now. And a lot of family members of mine have, has passed away, which I couldn't join. I couldn't be part of, because um, only close family, say, maybe the daughter, uh, the siblings of the parent or whatever, the children of the tenant and the children could go, which is a good. Um, when it was when it started out, I think it was Easter uh, when we had the whole lockdown. So normally we have the fish that we would eat and stuff. And I was I'm at home now, but I was in Cape Town um, when the lockdown started, so I couldn't be home by my family. Um, so I didn't get my pick of fish, which I get every year, which was kind of bad because I couldn't travel home and be with my family. So it's COVID-19 has changed a lot uh, in terms of celebrations and um, like holidays when people come around and come together and enjoy whichever holiday it is, you know. So um, for me personally, it has affected a lot of those uh, moments that we as a community would, would see as special. Like your 21st birthday, Easter, we eat the fish, you have the whole, so that you eat nothing else but fish. Um, but it's also nice. Um, and at funerals as well, we would, or after the funeral, get together, have a big party uh, to celebrate life. So uh, it's actually messed that kind of um, family thing up, the community thing up that we have. So that's been really difficult, you know, to be on the other side uh, when you have close family that has passed away and you can't even travel uh, to say goodbye to them. That's definitely something I can resonate with, Nicole. Um, I think a lot of the celebrations are, you know, like the, the involve like family gatherings. So... I know that on um, Easter Sunday, which was back in April, um, me and my family would all gather at my grandma's for like food and drink and just not necessarily like the religious connotations with Easter, to be honest, but more just like a chance to all get together because we live like in different parts of England. So it's just like a chance to come together and catch up on the last few months, like since Christmas. It's usually like the next thing since Christmas. Um. So that was definitely missed at Easter. Uh, another one for me personally was graduation. So I like I finished my degree um, from my bedroom and graduation has been, well, our university has said it's been postponed, which was a little bit of a relief. But the fact that it, it graduation is kind of what you feel you work towards, you know, your whole, all your years of studying. 
so when that wasn't a possibility anymore it was it was really like disheartening and and struggled to like motivate myself to actually finish um like my university work um but my university have actually put on like a virtual graduation I think it might be in August which I think is nice because it will be nice for like all of our like course to kind of tune in and we'll probably talk about similar topics and how this has affected us and you know we miss not being able to properly celebrate together um, and finally I don't know if you've heard of Glastonbury it's like a really famous music festival in England and I literally love it it's like my favorite place in the world um, so I was supposed to go to that this year in June and it didn't happen so my family like we, we kind of brought it to us and I made like a big multicolored sign and uh, we decorated all the garden because it's like this really cool edgy vibe there's loads of color dancing music um, and by that time we were allowed to meet with one other household so my auntie and uncle lived down the road so they came down to our back garden and we kind of had our own Glastonbury like it was kind of a trending um hashtag on social media which was glass homebury and I, and I just loved it because it really cheered me up I think it was something that I kind of needed coming towards the end of lockdown um that was really lovely to kind of and a totally different way because obviously usually I would go to the festival um but it was a whole new experience bringing it to us and my family absolutely loved it and actually said we should do it every year so that that was nice and like a, a probably a positive of not being able to go to like the typical festival that's starting your new your own new tradition still yeah, going to the festival. hi yeah so um for me one of the like weirdest celebrations was I turned 21 during lockdown and like the classic like American turning 21 you're like going to bars with your friends and stuff but obviously like I couldn't do that um and so like my brother and I we went to the liquor store and I was like I'm gonna get carded like it'll be in the guy like do at the liquor store did not even care like he was like we can go to another one where I know and he, I was like it's fine it's fine um so I came back home and we were like texting my mom and she was like sitting at, she had like made this whole party for me and she was sitting at the doors, like the bouncer. And she was like, can I see your ID? So she made it like, she like decorated the room. She had like my close friends and family um, make like a video for me. And it was basically saying like, hi. And um, it even had my friends who I had met while I was studying abroad had participated in the video. And so like that was, like really sweet because you know I had to like leave them early and stuff um so it was nice to be able to like see their faces again and like hear their voices um so it was definitely like not what I had expected my 21st to be but like she definitely kind of like you know it really helps to make it fun and memorable and like not anything that I had thought it would be but and in terms of just like other holidays um like for Mother's Day we usually go out and do like a uh, brunch or something and we couldn't do that or like Easter like my family's smaller but we usually like get together and do something so it was kind of weird not having the family aspect but it was also kind of nice to be able to just sit down with my like immediate family and just kind of be able to like talk and like have like a proper meal with them over like something we don't usually do um so it was like nice in some ways, like obviously I prefer regular Easter with all my family around and we're like running around and stuff like that. But it was it was kind of nice to experience it in a different way. Um, but yeah, I mean, recently we had the 4th of July and that was kind of I mean, nobody, you know, if people did go out and do things, it was kind of like, what are you doing? Like, we're all still in quarantine here, like, you know, people posting, hanging out with their friends and it's like okay you have fun with that um but yeah I'd say you know things are definitely different but it was kind of you know not a terrible thing for that so yeah yeah fourth of July is a big one for us um at least in my family so what usually happens is like 
it's kind of what Katie was saying. We don't really celebrate like, the actual holiday, even though it is like all Independence Day. We use it kind of as like a reason to like all get together, like friends and family. And so what we'll do is like we'll go down to the beach when it's like eight, like when it starts getting dark and everyone's at the beach, like my whole town, like friends, fully family of like other people. Um, we just crowd the beach and they shoot off the fireworks, um, which is really nice. And they shoot them off like everywhere. So like fireworks will be at like D.C., like any big capital of any little state will have them. And you also have them on like your local places, too. So everyone's watching fireworks. Obviously, like we couldn't do it this year, so we kind of had to watch them on the TV. And it was like not the same because obviously you're not looking at the real fireworks so it's kind of like oh those are nice but it's also kind of more convenient because getting out of like a very crowded area there's a lot of traffic so we'd like go to the fireworks and we'd see them for like an hour or two and then we'd sit there because no one would be able to leave the beach there's just too many cars um another personal like thing that we had to do that changed was um uh, my cousin they were expecting a baby and they had like a gender reveal party. So what they did was they ended up, and it's just the two of them, they live like in their own apartment and they're both nurses too. So they both really did not want to like have any risk of spreading anything. So they ended up just kind of doing it in their house and like video, like everyone in, like zooming them. And it was really nice and everything, but like I knew that like if it wasn't for COVID-19, like it would have been like a big old like, family event, like, friend event. Um, but, I mean, the baby's still on its way, so I'm excited. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. So, um, here in Chile, uh, the holidays uh, remain the same, but cannot be celebrated. Um, because the visit to apartments and the houses are prohibited. Um, we had always been able to celebrate our birthday remotely with video calls by Zoom, Google Meets and others. Um, the funerals, uh, when the people die, uh, are provided uh, with a maximum of 20 people and fully solid coffins. Um, all social activities are suspended. And to be able to outside, uh, we must to have a virtual uh, permit from the police, uh, but only to move to places of fears necessary uh, or necessity, uh, like supermarkets, hospitals, uh, drugstore or pharmacy. But in general, the pandemic uh, did not affect the Christmas or New Year, because um, here in Chile, the coronavirus arrived in at the beginning of March. I, I, I think that was in the first week of March. Um, it has become very difficult because the government has declared uh, financial aid but they took the measures very late and many people have lost their jobs. Um, they aid, the, the aid from the government does not arrive in a timely manner. Um, people are forced to leave their homes, to work informally, um, to feed themselves for the food and risking being imprisoned by the police or even paying millions of fines. And itself, the, company, the economy in Chile has good sustenance and progress, but it suffers um, from great inequality. For example, here in Chile, the minimum wage is $40,000 and the university cost approximately $4,050 a month. Um, the houses and the apartments, 
um, for food, you need per person a hundred dollars per month. So if you have four thousand four hundred dollars um, to wait for university, for your apartment and for your food, you are lost here in Chile. So that is the principal problem here. Many changes be must be permanent, I think, because before COVID-19, um, there was a strong, a strong social movement called estallido social, or in English, social explosion. Uh, this was because in Chile, uh, that I said, is a lot of inequality, uh, where the 10% of the population accumulates 26% of GDP, the gross domestic product. So the medicine, health system, and education are very expensive. So that is the situation here in Chile in this moment. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so um, the, the festival of celebration in China I would like to share is the Spring Festival. I, I'm sure that some of you have heard about it. So the Spring Festival in China is just like the Christmas for people in Western countries. And since I was not in China during the Spring Festival holiday, so I just do a, I just, I, I have just done a little survey among the friends and the family members who are close to me. So here's my conclusion. They, they said that the corona, corona, coronavirus do have some special effects on their celebration of the Spring Festival. So basically, they are locked down at home. So usually Chinese people are going to have, a, I mean, a huge meal like a special meal on New Year's Eve, but they they can during this year they do not they did not got the chance to have the meal outside in restaurants, so they can only cook at home. And also they watch the Spring Gala. And in this year, the Spring Gala has a special program that it interviewed some medical workers who went to Wuhan to help to deal with the situation. So this is the most special part that is different from the Spring Galas in other years. And since the cinemas, cinema were closed during this special period, so most of my friends and family members choose to just stay at home and maybe watch TV programs or play cards or play mahjong. Have you heard about that mahjong? <laughs> yeah, they play mahjong at home with their family members, and they do not they do not have the chance to visit their relatives, either you know distant relatives or close relatives. So basically, Chinese people are stay in core families instead of uh, huge or big families during this year this year's celebration of the Spring Festival, and yeah, so for many you know students, they're having the they are having the whole whole term of e-learning, so they have a lot of time to spend with their families. And this is, I mean, this is to some extent beneficial to those students who have to go go to other provinces for study. You know, they have much time to share with their family. Yeah, and the this is the fest celebration of festival I would like to share. I just wanted to say, um, like in light of what everyone was saying, I don't know how you all feel, but the thought of like going back into like functioning society, how it was before COVID and all the group activities that would have went on, um, the festivals, even, even like, you know, going to like the town centre where it's just hundreds of people all the time actually makes me feel like really anxious and I know that on um Saturday just gone July 4th um the UK had like um we, I think we went into like another phase of opening so pubs and restaurants um places like hairdressers and barbers 
um, were allowed to open again. Um, and it was like a weird feeling because it was like really exciting, but also kind of like, oh my God, I haven't done this for a few months and I don't know what to expect. It's quite like, it, it creates like a lot of anxiety and also the thought of those huge social gathering situations again. Like I, I really enjoy them. I'm like a really social person, but I don't know, there's something about like the huge crowds and that again that, does make me feel like a, a little bit nervous I guess I wondered like if anyone else kind of had similar feelings or different I totally have to agree with you um we are also on that phase now where uh, the restaurants can open um hair salons and all that um I'm so dying for pizza I haven't had one in a very yeah. long time but I'm also scared to go to the restaurant and sit down, you know, um, and have a pizza. Um, I don't know. I think I'm more afraid of actually going out, sitting down. And, like, you don't know, like, any of the workers could have it and you wouldn't even know, you know. Um, so it's difficult. And, like, in Toba, where I'm from, it's a rural area, so, like, there's no deliveries. When I was in Cape Town, I could have delivery. So if I actually want to uh, have a pizza or something, I actually have to go to the restaurant, you know, um, and sit down. So I've been meaning to go, but I've been delaying it for so long because like, I'm so afraid that even not even not at the restaurant, but uh, we have one town, we have one street, which is like where all the shops is, which is where everyone shops. It's not like in Cape Town where you have a whole lot of uh, different places you can shop from. So now that people are back to work, it's like the, 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 the street, the town, the little town we have is, is every day full. Um, so I can pick it up anyway, you know, I'm bringing it home to my family, to my mom and dad, um, scares me. So... In terms of restaurants and stuff, like, I don't think I'm going to feel comfortable going there and sitting down uh, until I'm back in Cape Town where I can actually order food and get it delivered, you know, and when I'm on my own back in my dorm. So I'm glad it all opened up, but also very skeptical of it all. So, so is the restaurants, are you guys allowed to eat outdoor right now or still restricted? In your country. Did you say outdoor, sorry, or oh, indoor? Oh, so no, outdoor. Um, in the UK now, we're allowed to eat inside and outside of restaurants um, with restrictions in place. So, for example, in the restaurant, it would be like at least two metres distance between each table. And I think all the employees have to wear like masks and gloves. Um, and they've changed like the menus to paper menus instead of like hardback ones. I don't know how it is, but I think because I haven't went to a restaurant yet, so um, so I don't know if like how the waiters or the employees, I would say, uh, takes precaution. You know, I actually have to go sit down and see everything that that has changed which will probably be um like wow you know it hasn't been like this you know so it will probably be amazing to see how everything inside a restaurant has actually changed uh, to accommodate everyone during this pandemic um it's interesting because our phase actually got moved up a couple of days um, it was supposed to be, I think, June, like, 20th, but because of Father's Day, it got moved up to, like, June 17th because they wanted more people to have the opportunity to have different ways to celebrate. And they also wanted, like, businesses, like, for the economy, like, to open up and start um, implementing some of the protocols they had in place. And so, for me, like, I went back to work. And I work at a farm, actually. I work at a strawberry and blueberry farm. And people can come and like pick their own fruit. 
And it's really interesting because like we have also like protocols in place. And I really did not think anyone was going to show up for the sole purpose of like, I was nervous going back to work. So I was nervous just walking like in like a big crowded area. I was like assuming other people weren't going to show. But a lot of people, from what I've like seen, at least at work, they do show up. But, you know, you have like different people handling the pandemic different ways. There's some people like not following protocol at all. And then there's some who are very considerate and very understanding on it. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed this also in your countries. Like so there is a difference between how people are handling it, at least here. I would definitely agree with you with people handling the whole uh, situation differently because uh, when I was in Cape Town, people would follow rules very strictly. Um, but here in Tobach, it was, I think, because it's a rural area, um, you don't actually see people. I mean, I wasn't here for the most of it. When we were at level five, we couldn't go outside of your house unless it was for grocery shopping. But now I can even see people walking without masks. They will keep their masks uh, in their pockets until they get to a shop, you know, and because you cannot enter into a shop without a mask. And then they will put it on. So back in Cape Town, you would see people walking with masks in the street wherever they go, even when they were in the cars. Right. So that's actually, I think, in Toba, people handled it handle it a lot differently. They don't see the uh, the seriousness of the whole COVID-19 uh, thing we're going through. But So I think that's what scares me a little to go to the restaurant, you know, and sit down because they don't actually follow protocol the way they should in Toba. So yeah, I would definitely agree with you when you say that people handle the situation. Definitely. Yeah, I'd say it's kind of the same thing here. Like, I live in Connecticut, and we're very strict about, like, making sure everyone has their masks, and you're not allowed to enter stores without your mask and stuff like that. Whereas, like, in Florida, where cases are spiking, like, people are just walking around, like, no masks. The workers aren't wearing masks. Like, the only places that they're really wearing masks are, like, if it's a big chain like Walmart, and it's, like, like um the store's policy that you have to wear a mask but other than that it's like nobody is really bothering um and they're like not really doing social distancing down there and stuff like that so it's definitely and they'll have like um weekly at least uh like the state and then they'll show like where areas are spiking and where they're going down um and so that's been interesting to kind of see like what states are spiking really badly and then like what protocols like I know in Florida they like closed some state or some areas closed down the beaches because they realized like people are going to go there and party for the fourth or they closed down the bars and stuff like that so it's been interesting to see like once they realize there's a spike if the governors in that area are taking the protocols necessary to kind of decrease that spike and see like, oh, this is why we had that spike and what can we do to make it go down? So um, in China right now, um, people feel free to have meals in restaurants and there, there is a no limitation of, you know, distance between people and people, between one people and another. but like cinemas are still closed right now so people are not allowed to go to like entertainment places and most of them are just staying at home but they they can't go to regular work right now and for supermarket and public transportation as other countries do people has to have to wear facial masks and gloves when they enter into these places or you get on a bus or metro and this, these are, I, I mean, the basic policies the government are still taking right now to prevent people from getting affected by the virus. I think that's one um, thing that's difficult. Oh, sorry, Nicole. That's okay, you can talk. 
I was just gonna say I think that's one thing that's been difficult throughout all this it's like people who've kind of disobeyed either from the beginning of lockdown or like during it um you know it it, it it's supposed to be a collective effort like globally so it, it is it's hard to understand why you know there is certain people who feel like they they can kind of disobey um and sometimes obviously they are met with consequences I know that um in the UK like there was fines at the beginning of lockdown for people who were just like totally uh, disregarding the rules and, and another thing was about um like you know like the natural um places that you could visit like beaches and national parks or woodland areas um because obviously they are like naturally open I think but especially when it was really warm here there would just be like mass gatherings of people from you know all over like you're talking hundreds and hundreds of people on the beaches or in the woods or like and understandably you know people might want to go out for exercise but you have to be cautious and understand that we're not supposed to be you know getting extremely close to anyone um and another thing that like really annoyed me about that was like the state that these natural areas were getting left in because you know either people were going to party or they were just going for like a barbecue or like even a picnic because you know the, the places that would usually be open like little cafes or restaurants or bars were shut so they were going to places like beaches and just totally leaving it in like a, an absolute state I know that like I'm from Liverpool and it's like a place called Crosby and we have um like a Facebook group of people because there's a beach like just down the road we have a, a group of people who like work together and go down and like clean the beach after like maybe a really hot day or things like that and um, and they were kind of reaching out saying you know if anyone's got free time can you come and give us a hand on cleaning the beach because it's just been left like in an absolute state from people coming down and that's another thing like not only be cautious of your health and other people's health but the environment and like you know everyone's got to enjoy it so kind of don't just leave your mess for everyone else to clean up I guess yeah I totally agree with you so in South Africa I don't know if it's the same way you guys so you're not allowed to hug anyone or shake hands you can only greet someone with the elbow like we are touching our elbows when you, elbows when you, when you see someone um that's like the new greeting way um but it's so strange when you haven't seen family for a long time so when i came back home um i totally forgot about the whole elbow thing and just went straight in for the hug or whatever um even at my uncle's first year's party last weekend we so like it's all family you haven't seen for like months or some of them even like for a year or so. So it was weird just doing the whole elbow thing, um, even though you should be cautious and stuff. Um, so we all just went straight in for the hug and stuff. Um, but like, is it, can you guys hug each other if you haven't seen each other for a really long time? Or should you guys also do the elbow thing? Or like, what is it, like the new greeting method? Uh, in your country we don't really have like a rule stating you can't hug people but because of like the whole six feet social distancing thing um you're kind of like expected not to hug people but I was kind of in the same boat like I had been abroad this semester and I came home um and like we had like a social distancing get together with my family and it was just kind of weird to not be able to like hug everyone and like sit close with everybody and I have like a younger cousin and he like wasn't completely understanding like that he couldn't we couldn't like go play nerf together and stuff like that like we had to like sit apart so it's definitely like different like you know if you meet someone for the first time you can't give them like a handshake or like it's just kind of like an awkward like wave and you just like weirdly stand there because you don't know what to do um 
but yeah, that's definitely changed for us here. Yeah, so like going on what Ashley was saying, like in the US, you don't have like an actual rule on the protocol when you meet somebody. They kind of just assume that everyone is on the same page and they won't hug each other. But um, yeah, seeing family and everything, it is very tempting, especially even if it's just close friends, like after a while. Um, I did like a social distance like meetup as well. And it was really hard because like, you know, some of these people we haven't seen for like months on end. And so you really want to just like go and hug them and then like you have to understand like whatever they're kind of comfortable with. So a lot of times it was literally just waving, not even elbows. Um, so uh, it's very different. <laughs> um, it's also like when you talk naturally for me, like I usually just like get close to something, like not invading a personal space, but like we're like not six feet apart, but naturally I will talk to people. So like staying that far away, it's like, Exchange because I'm seeing you at such a greater distance. I'm like, wow, you're really far. Like, come closer. And I'm like, oh, never mind. I think the UK is um has been similar to what to what you guys are saying. Um, it, the, there wasn't like a rule set in place, but it was kind of assumed because it, if you had to keep your distance, like you know, you're you're obviously not going to be able to hug um people, but I think um that changed when I, th- I think Saturday um when two households were allowed to mix and go indoors and stay like stay over. So I, I think I heard on the radio it was saying you know grand grandchildren like are finally allowed to hug their grandparents again and it was literally the sweetest thing to hear. I was like oh and I've been to see my grandma which was like the loveliest thing and um, to just be able to like give them a big hug again because you know how much they miss yet but I think like in relation to this whole culture thing and like the celebrations like affection and like human contact is something we just don't even kind of take notice of every day like hugging or shaking hands you know whatever you kind of do to greet people you obviously usually like a hug is more informal with like family and friends but even people you haven't met before, like, I think if they're a similar age, I would probably hug them anyway. Like, it would be, only be, like, formal settings where I would shake hands. So I think it, it's kind of nice to to see that kind of affection and human contact could also be classed as, like, a culture thing globally and something that people have definitely missed and kind of felt during this whole thing, you know, that lack of affection towards your family and your loved ones has been really strange and maybe something you know now we will appreciate like so much more now that we can that is so cute like you can start hugging their like grandchildren and everything now oh I know because a lot of people have like complained on like even though some places have opened up like you can't the grandparents can't take the grandchildren anywhere because, like, even in a car, they're not six feet apart. Yeah. And so it's been a lot of, like, waving from, like, windows and things. So, like, that's really exciting for you. Yeah. For me, I have a lot of baby cousins. Can you hear me? No, you would know. Okay. Yes, you can. Oh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay um so in my opinion um the social distancing is is so difficult at the time when many people are suffering um it is difficult for people to understand that we are taking care of ourselves um with with that distance uh, but we have all need a heal in this moment, I, I think. Um, but in my case, I study uh, at night and also I work from Monday to Sunday. Uh, fortunately, uh, I can work from my home and I had the company of my boyfriend, uh, my two friends that lives with me, uh, my little dog, Lucky. <laughs> um, but uh, but it's so difficult in this moment. So um, that I say, um, the people here in Chile, 
uh, have a maximum of two permits to go out during the week. Uh, if is extremely uh, necessary for necessary things. So if you can see that, uh, I don't know if you, here. That is an example of the permission by the police. With that, you can go out from your house only for with that. You have two maximum at week. Okay. So if it if it's necessary to go out. Mm -hmm. um, here in, in my house with my boyfriend, uh, we only go out every 15 days. Uh, many plays and mus uh, musicals are being broadcast online, so uh, we we had to invent new activities because the psychological pressures um, are affecting people a lot, and I think the psychological, psychological uh, issue is a big problem around the world in this moment. At uh, my university, for example, they do medical and psychological, uh, psychological care online, but very, very, uh, very, um, uh, a lot of people uh, are having problems with your, with your um, uh, mental health. So. I have something to supply, like just, you know, the, the previous, um, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but maybe Len, Lendor, maybe, I, I don't know. But yeah, actually you mentioned that there is a kind of permission and here is the same like permission in China and in Shanghai. So I am showing you that here's with my photo, my name, and like a code, if the code is green, so you can go outside and go pub, go to public transportation with this code and go to restaurant. But if you know the code is red or yellow, that means you are not you are unsafe right now and you are allow, not allowed to go to public places. And like this, you can just get this code on your cell phone and so you can go with go with that. That's so interesting and like really, like really good. I think we'd really benefit from having something like that, especially with like the likes of pubs and restaurants and bars opening again. Um, in the UK, I know that already after Saturday, um, like three three bars have been like closed down again because like people from them have had like found out that they had COVID. So had to alert everyone who was in there on that night and the actual place itself was closed down and I'm not even sure how they alerted everyone because I don't know like I personally haven't been to any so I don't know the procedure but I know that we definitely don't have anything on our phone which could kind of alert us or like record our details so I think that's like a really good way to use it and kind of like what we need to be aiming for to be honest. So the pubs are open for you guys, you can go into a pub. Yeah, scary thought. I know, I, I, I'm not tempted at all. Typical British, eh? But I'm not tempted at all because I don't understand how, like, the rules would be adhered to. I, I, like, I can't see how. And also, like, you, you very rarely go to the pub alone like fair enough if you do you know some people definitely want to but you know it, for me it would be like a social thing with my friends so I'm just not tempted at all to kind of just go and be like away from everyone so well our pubs and our clubs are not allowed to be open even like our churches aren't open yet um because we feel yeah. like they would be too much of a lot gathering once those open. So you can buy alcohol, but you have to buy alcohol and drink it at home. And you are not allowed to buy alcohol during, like, on weekends. So you can only buy Monday 
uh, till Thursday, from Friday on, you're not allowed to buy alcohol anymore, um, which I feel like is very smart because a lot of people would drink on the weekends, you know. Mm. Um, and now that like everyone is going back to work, it's harder for them to actually go and buy alcohol during the week. So this so consumption of alcohol, but that's so like. They're still containing it a little bit. They're still controlling the whole intake of it. So I feel like opening up a pub is like... No, not essential at all. And like, places of worship opened as yeah. well for the first time on the 4th. And it was kind of like, how how can you open, you know, a pub the same day? as like places of worship, which are obviously like so much more important to people. Um, but I guess we'll see. It's kind of another experiment, unfortunately. And we are still not allowed to smoke. The cigarettes are so banned. So, like, it's weird how they would um, open up the alcohol, but still ban the cigarettes, you know? Yeah. So, like, I don't know, but obviously... Our president has his reasons for that. It's uh, definitely a new environment, something we're getting used to. I Going back to what Leo said, uh, like being able to stay home, it does very stressful. So being able to take care of your emotional well-being as well as physical is really critical in this uh, time. I specifically was not able to, I stayed home for like two weeks and it becomes so overwhelming. I started I like screaming at the walls. I, like, I cannot stay home. I'm, the, I'm more the person who like always likes to be outside and talking to people. So I I immediately find a job after two weeks. I was like, I cannot stay home anymore. So I started working at the hospital. But additionally to that, I did went out with a few friends in the past few weeks to, to the beach where we did more of like imaginary handshakes. So we just meet and just like, what's up? I just had some time just for you to like release all the stress and have some social time with your friends too. Because it gets pretty stressful being able to work during COVID plus academics and plus staying home alone, which kind of gets very frustrating. So you need some time to relax yourself. So I think social life is definitely a big factor in those situations. You definitely have to find a way maybe go outside connect with the nature go to the beach or hiking or something to help you stay active and for your emotional well-being is also critical yeah i think that was one of the questions as well in the email from jana wasn't it about how this has kind of affected you and what you've done personally to cope and um, exercise is definitely one for me um, I think that just helps you so much mentally, obviously physically as well, but it just kind of distracts you for, you know, half an hour, an hour, and then sets you up for your day, ready to kind of do whatever you're going to do, um, whether it's studying or kind of working. Um, so I, I, I'm grateful that I've just been able to kind of still do exercise even from home. I don't know, has anyone else got like any type of mechanisms during this? Well, at least... Oh, oh, sorry, Nicole. You can go. No, you can speak. Um, I was going to say, like, I like to go, like, out into those public places, so, like, parks or, like, any kind of, like, beach, like, you know, just walking around outside. But, Katie, you brought up a really good point that, like, a lot of people are using that as, like, an outlet to, like, drink and, like, party and meet up with friends. And, like, they are definitely not respecting, like, the environment the same way. So, like, even, like, going on, like, hiking trails and stuff, like, you'll see, like, so much more, like, little and, like, garbage and stuff. So it's really important to, like, make sure people are, like, you, like actually caring for the environment as well. Uh, I'm not big on activities that much. Because, um, obviously, in Togo, there's not a lot to do. Uh, so, but I love traveling. So that has, because I can't travel, that's like the only activity I love doing and the only activity I actually do besides going to school and stuff. So because I couldn't travel 
it was it was kind of hard, you know. Um, but in terms of besides that, it hasn't actually affected me that much in terms of activities because I'm normally a person that would, if I don't have schoolwork or whatever, I would lay in bed all day, watch movies or whatever. I'm, I'm more of that kind of person. Um, some weekends I would go out for things, but but not always. So, like the whole traveling thing, it kind of it's like a downside to this whole thing because if I can't travel, then like, there's nothing else I'm interested in, you know. So that has kind of affected me a lot. Where does everyone's country stand with traveling at the minute? Like, and how do you kind of feel about it? Like, are you keen to kind of go on like your next holiday or a bit skeptical? I know that, um, again, on the 4th of July, a lot happened this weekend. Um, I think we we kind of created like a, kind of, a, a bit of a partnership with um, some of the EU countries where after a certain date in July, um, people traveling in, inside and outside of the UK no longer had to quarantine when they returned home. So like travel corridors were created where now, like for example, if I wanted to go on holiday to Spain, I could and then come back and not have to quarantine. Um, again, don't know how safe that is. I personally think it's another experiment. Um, but in saying that, I really would love a holiday because English weather's so bad. <laughs> um, I was supposed to travel to the States uh, in April. And like I wanted to do the whole Pride Festival thing uh, in the States, but obviously that couldn't happen anymore. Um, we are not allowed to travel outside of your own province unless um, you are doing deliveries or something. So couriers can go um, into another province, but as far as it's like for people who don't work or um, who would like to go to family and stuff, you can't, you have to stay in your own uh, province. Uh, if you do go for like a funeral or something, so you're like a close relative or whatever, um, then you get a permit, you know, so, you know, you get a, you get a permit for, for that time you're going to be there and then you have to come back. Um, and it was difficult for students when the whole lockdown thing started for students uh, who were staying, as myself, who were staying at the residency uh, at the campus because um, they had to rush to get home, and we are from different provinces, so they had to rush to get home and stuff. Um, and we only had like I think it was four days or so uh, to get to wherever you had to go before the lockdown started. I think the president allowed us for four days to travel. Um, I don't. I think we are at level three now. And I think um, traveling to other provinces, I don't think a road would happen um, for now. But I think under level two or so, or level one, we would be allowed to travel to other provinces. But traveling a road, I don't think that's going to happen um, very like quickly or whatever. So the only people that has been traveling abroad abroad was people that had to come back home and people that who were from other states that was here had to go back to their countries. Um but as as far as vacation that is not gonna happen for a very long time. I feel like because our president said that he thinks this would continue for at least two years. Am are you guys allowed to travel? Um, so it's similar to you. It's um, 
we can travel like outside any of the states. But if you all go into a place where it's high, like cases, so like any of the big ones, so, like in Texas, um, the sort of complete increase in cases. Um, my friend actually went down there because her brother had a wedding, and you know she wants to see her brother get married. But coming back, she has to quarantine for the 14 days, and um, for because she walks, she has to get the test as well to prove that, you know, she wasn't infected while she was down there. Um, but yeah, there isn't quite as many regulations. It's just we like they would say like you have to drive instead of fly anywhere, um, because it would be safer, you're know, more contained in like a car. Um, and then for me, I was gonna go to study abroad in Scotland actually. Um, and I actually got an email saying that it could still be on, like, if I wanted to, I could go, but I was like, I would rather just wait for, like, maybe the spring and see how everything plays out, especially with everyone talking about, like, a second wave of this virus. Um, I know, Tabby, you were talking about your permit and how it, you can go on for transportation. Where can you go in, like, China for, like, places? Can, can you hear me right now? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so thank thank you for your question. And basically, in China now we can yeah we can travel from city to cities and province to province. Apart from you know Beijing, except for that, people can you know feel free to travel from a, a city to another. And yeah, at, at as long as they have the green code, they can travel and they can work and they can do every regular things. But if you are from the city like Beijing, if you want to go to another place, maybe you need to be quarantined. And if you just come back from abroad, like other countries, the government requires everybody come come back from other countries to be self-quarantined in a hotel for 14 days. And maybe if you are from countries with an increasing number of cases, you have to be quarantined for 28 days. So now this is the situation and our government tries hard to control, you know, the total number of the cases and try to prevent, prevent our citizens from ga getting affected. Oh, that's so interesting. Thank you. Well, thank you guys. Um, let's see, it has been absolutely heartwarming to hear the ways that you guys have adapted your celebrations and the important cultural traditions and also just everyday life during the pandemic. Um, one bright spot of all of this is that we're doing these familiar things in new ways and that makes them sort of memorable. You know, Ashley, I have no idea what I did for my 21st birthday. But I'm sure you'll never forget Club Ashley and your mom is a bouncer. Um, and Katie, to your point about needing human touch, that really resonated with me. Um, whatever virtual additions we make uh, to our celebrations this year, they're not re a real substitute for being in the presence of our loved ones. Um, In-person interaction is what we need and it's what we crave. Virtual celebrations can offer us some sort of comfort when we're forced apart, but it's, it's really not a long-term solution. Um, but anyway, thank you again for joining us today. We really appreciate your willingness to be open about these um, very personal matters. So thank you so much and we'll see you guys next time. Thank okay. you. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.